tonight on Connecticut's news station. A brazen series of burglaries, smash and grabs, and break-ins at stores across Hartford County. And investigators think they could all be connected. A close call tonight with winter weather advisories in effect just over the border. What does that mean for us? Your full forecast coming up. The elections might be over, so why is it still so unclear who will serve as Bridgeport's mayor? A look tonight at what's next as more accusations of ballot fraud come to light. And it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for those of the Catholic faith. A well known relic makes a brief appearance in our state. We'll take you to church to hear from worshipers who came out to see it. Now at 10, this is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. We begin tonight with a series of overnight burglaries that police believe could be related. Thanks for joining us for the News at 10. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Sarah Sanchez. Six different private businesses in five different Hartford County towns were hit, all between the hours of 1 and 5 a.m. Now, some of the break-ins were even caught on camera. One such business sharing this security camera footage with Fox 61. Our Jay Garcia spoke with employees of some of the businesses hit overnight, and he joins us live from Bloomfield now with the latest on the investigation. Jake? Well, Brent and Sarah, it all started just after 1 this morning on I-91 in Weathersfield when state troopers tried to pull over a white Subaru that had been reported stolen earlier. But the driver did not stop, and troopers decided not to give chase. So investigators believe about 15 minutes later, is when the string of break-ins began. Police in Berlin say there was an attempted smash and grab at Sam's Food on the Berlin Turnpike, where two suspects tried to steal an ATM. 30 minutes later, in Farmington, signs of an attempted break-in were reported at the Shell gas station on Farmington Avenue, but nothing was taken. Nearly an hour later, police in Windsor responded to a smash and grab at this Bloom's discount liquor store on Windsor Avenue. 30 minutes later, the same type of car is seen on surveillance video entering the parking lot at Waypoint Spirits in Bloomfield. The surveillance video capturing the moment they broke into the store. They had broken in, I believe, with a crowbar, came through and actually put holes in the door, came up with their arms and unlocked the door. So made a very easy entry, came in and they were extremely strategic. Video shows two men entering the business with another as lookout at the front door. Ultimately, they came in looking for money. They pulled out the cash drawer, they tried to get everything, and obviously there was nothing here. Um, and then they went to product. The burglars made off with about two cases of liquor. Wedish says this has shaken their sense of trust. I, I wouldn't want to say a breach of trust, but you know, it makes you think about what's going on out there. It, it's, um, it hurts. It definitely hurts. Just after four in the morning, yet another break-in occurred at the liquor cabinet on Rainbow Road in East Granby. The owner there describing a similar chain of events, saying cigarettes, bottles of liquor, and empty cash registers were taken from the store. They were in the store for about a minute and a half and, and just left. Three minutes later, there was another attempted break-in at the Sitco just a half mile away from the liquor cabinet in East Granby. Castro says these types of crimes not only impacts businesses, but the customers too. All these costs get passed through to the customer at the end of the day. And no suspects have been identified at this time, but police here in Bloomfield and in Berlin, Farmington, Windsor, as well as state police are all investigating the string of break-ins as actively as of tonight. We're live in Bloomfield. Jake Garcia, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Jake, thank you. That's quite a spree. Uh, breaking news tonight. After 118 days on the picket line, the Hollywood Actors Union has reached a tentative deal with movie studios to end its strike. The contract agreement still must be approved by the sag afters board and its members, but the deal signals the end of the labor strike that has grounded the entertainment industry for months now. The Writers Guild was also on strike with the actors, and they reached an agreement back in September. Details of the agreement are expected to be shared within the coming days, the union says the month's long strike will be over tomorrow. All right, turning to the weather now, and it is cold across Connecticut tonight with some areas 
teetering on freezing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank joining us. Rachel, the coat I grabbed tonight was not, wasn't cutting it. <laughs> I mean, I knew what the temperatures would be, and I would say the same for myself. I'm like, hmm, I should have, I should have thought a little bit harder about that. And it is so chilly today to go along with that theme. Maybe a snowflake or even a sleep pellet in parts of the state. Now, a lot of what I'm about to show you is evaporating before it reaches the ground. So you're seeing snow or sleep falling from the cloud, but it goes into a dry layer of air below that and starts to cut down on anything that's reaching the ground. But there could be a couple of sleep pellets here around Canaan, and there might be a sprinkle or a sleep pellet from Warren all the way down through Southbury. Again, most of this is not ma making it to the ground, and a lot of it will end up staying north of Connecticut, so the impact is going to be very low for us here overall. And a lot of this activity from the storm system will end up staying away. And that's the reason you'll see there is a winter weather advisory in effect just over the border of Connecticut into the Berkshires of Massachusetts, a lot of New York State and most of Vermont, where a messy overnight and morning commute is possible. Right now, temperatures are above freezing, but we're getting close mid 30s there in Torrington, close to 40 degrees in Hartford and Groton. Overnight, temperatures will linger in the 30s. We'll see a chance for a couple scattered showers tomorrow, but a lot of the day is dry and there might even be some late day clearing. We'll talk more about it. Your full forecast coming up. All right, Rachel, thank you. A man accused of killing a visiting nurse in Willimantic was in court to face probation violation charges today. Michael Reese was put on probation for an assault charge back in 2006. Police say Reese is a suspect in the murder of Joyce Grace at a halfway house in Willimantic last month. They say Reese had Grace's belongings after her death, but he is not yet charged in her murder. Police say they will continue to investigate. And Ansonia police have made an arrest in connection to a murder over the summer. Jada Artis has been charged for her alleged involvement in the deadly shooting of Abdul Jalil Humphrey. It happened on Hodge Avenue on July 14th. Police say a second suspect, Savon Valentine, has been identified as a person of interest. Police believe he was the one who ultimately pulled the trigger on Humphrey. He is currently in custody on unrelated charges and is expected to be arrested. Well, despite two rounds of voting, people in Connecticut's most populous city still don't know who their next mayor will be. Mayor Joe Gannam is claiming victory, but once again, John Gomes is saying the election was stolen. Fox 61's Matt Karen shed some light on where Bridgeport goes next. Well, a new primary will be held likely sometime in December, but it's only going to affect the mayor's race, not any of the other contests. We won again on the poll. A new election, the same result. Where we go from here now is a new primary. John Gomes was ahead of Mayor Joe Gannon by 564 votes until the late night tally of absentee ballots put Gannon in the lead by 175. Gomes calling Gannon a corrupt criminal, Gannon calling Gomes a vengeful bully. Respect the voters of the city of Bridgeport. Withdraw these claims. One thing we know, Tuesday's election won't count. A judge who found what he called shocking evidence of ballot fraud ordered a new primary. To do a primary again after a legitimate general election seems, excuse the word, uh, but I'll use it, asinine. Ganim could appeal that ruling to the state Supreme Court, but didn't provide any clarity. The lawyers are looking at that right now. Ironically, the scenario makes Bridgeport's third place finisher, Lamont Daniels, a powerful man. He hasn't decided if he'll continue his campaign. Some say you could play the role of a spoiler. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, well, right now, I'm, right now, I have two young children. And so on the uh, day after, right now, our focus is spending, my focus is spending time with my family. With more than 18,000 votes, Daniels has more than enough to sway the election. He hasn't ruled out endorsing another candidate. I haven't ruled out anything right now. All this as John Gomes once again claims the election was stolen. The same perpetrators who were on administrative leave with, with pay were out there um, or orchestrating their, their game and how they were going to steal uh, the absentee ballot once again. And as Mayor Ganim walked away from a question about the employment status of Wanda Jeter, his supporter and city employee caught on camera allegedly committing ballot fraud. Can you update us? I think we're good, guys. Wanda, we're good, okay? 
people want to know that. What do they want to know? The answer, employment please. status of Wanda? I mean, she's on paid administrative leave. When are you going to make a decision on her? I, I don't make those decisions, but thank you for asking. You're the mayor. You don't make decisions. I don't make those decisions. decisions. I also talked today with the Office of the Secretary of the State. They told me that both campaigns have until Friday to agree on a date for a new primary. It still remains unclear if Bridgeport's appointed interim election monitor, who's serving as a watchdog of sorts, Peggy Reeves, will remain in her position for this new primary. Reporting in Bridgeport, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Well, now that he is officially the mayor-elect of Hartford, Arunan Aralampalam is not wasting a moment of time. Today, he announced the heavy hitters he has chosen for his transition team, and their first priority is to listen to voters, he said, including those who didn't vote for him. Aralampalam plans to host public hearings all month. Topics include economic development, community policing, safe spaces for Hartford's youth, and increasing housing options. I think it's important that the mayor be engaged. Um, but it's also important that, that democracy is a two-way conversation. Democracy doesn't just happen in the voting booth, that it happens all year round, and we are really engaging in conversations about what it looks like to dream about the city, to be hopeful for the city. Outgoing Mayor Luke Bronin says it's uh, time for politics uh, to end and it's time to come together. He says he sees the next two months as a time to tie up loose ends and make sure the new team can come in with as few distractions as possible. Voters also made several ballot question decisions in Simsbury by about 560 votes. Voters decided not to allow recreational marijuana retail. Towns control zoning decisions for pot shops despite the state legalizing use and sales in 2022. By an even more narrow margin, just 165 votes, Norwich rejected a plan for a new police station. It would have cost nearly $45 million. Backers of the proposal say the city has outgrown their current building. And in New Haven, a referendum, voters resoundingly supported revising the city charter. That means the mayor and alders will now have four-year terms instead of two. It also approves a pay raise for the Board of Alders. These rules do not take effect until 2027.